Mankey, you're mine now! Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and welcome to Pokemon Explained where we focus on the narrative arcs of all our favorite characters from the Pokemon anime. In today's episode, we'll be deep diving into Ash's primate and walking through its complete history on Ash's team, breaking down all of its storylines, major appearances, battles, and character development. Primeape is significant for being the first Pokemon Ash left in training and for being Ash's first true powerhouse. Had it returned or stayed with Ash longer, I have no doubt fans would consider it one of Ash's strongest reserves, much like his Snorlax and his Heracross. Though it only appeared two times, both of Primeape's appearances were well-paced and excellently crafted. Given its outrageous personality and memorable time on Ash's team, it's crazy to think just how little time Primeape actually spent with Ash. Like Butterfree before it, Primeape's characterization happened at a lightning quick pace. Unlike Butterfree, however, I've always felt that Primeape's third act is still waiting to be told. But before we speak further on what could and should have been, let's refocus on the history behind Primeape and Ash's rocky relationship. Primeape debuted in the appropriately named Primeape Goes Bananas, while still just a Mankey. Personality-wise, Mankey was jolly and intensely curious, but also prone to incredible fits of anger. Upon encountering Mankey, Ash was absolutely thrilled as he had just discovered from Professor Oak that Gary had captured both more Pokemon and earn more badges. He was so excited to capture Mankey that he tried to do so without a battle. Unfortunately, Mankey found this to be a huge offense to its power and strength. Mankey famously dodged capture by intercepting the Pokeball with one of Brock's rice balls. Though initially friendly, Mankey grew furious at Ash for his lack of respect for its battling abilities. Mankey provided him a thorough thrashing, and according to the Pokedex, once a Mankey begins to thrash, it's impossible to stop. Ridiculous Pokedex entry aside, Mankey solidified its victory over Ash by stealing his official Pokemon League hat. Mankey gloated happily while rubbing its win in Ash's face. When Ash attempted to reclaim his hat, he was interrupted by the arrival of Team Rocket. Mankey was curious about the three intruders and happily investigated them until James punted the pig monkey over the evolutionary goal line. Mankey was so, so enraged that it evolved into Primeape immediately after being kicked by James. James's feet must have had the magic touch as Mankey's evolution completely paralleled how his Magikarp evolved in Pokemon Shipwreck. Now in its evolved form as a Primeape, the enraged Pokemon made quick work of both James's coughing and Jesse's Ekin. It effectively removed Team Rocket from the rest of the episode's equation. Even though it had won the battle against Team Rocket, Primeape was still furious, angry, and ready to battle it instantly set its sight on Ash and his friends. Pikachu attempted to defend Ash with Thundershock, but the attack had little effect. Brock's hand of friendship was met with similar, yet much, much funnier failure. Determined to prove his worth as a wise Pokemon master, Ash called forth both his Squirtle and Bulbasaur, but both Pokemon's attacks were rendered entirely useless. By proving itself more powerful than Pikachu, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle, Primeape established itself as an instant threat on Ash's team. Ash really should have used Pidgeotto, who would have had an immense flying type advantage over the fighting type. But alas, Ash was a noob at this point in the series. Rather than Pidgeotto, Ash selected Charmander as his final stand against Primeape. Though its first flamethrower was swiftly dodged and countered by a barrage of punches, Charmander rebounded with its newly learned Rage Attack. Rage supercharged Charmander's flamethrower, much like we would see in later seasons with Blaze and Infernape allowing it to weaken Primeape just enough for Ash to capture it. Right before Charmander's attack landed, Pikachu also rescued Ash's hat. Between its cruel treatment at the hands of Team Rocket, lack of bonding with Ash, and its already brash nature, Primeape refused to listen to Ash even after being captured. In the very next episode after its capture, Pokemon Sense Station, Ash considered using Primeape against gym leader Erika, 
but decided against it when he wisely realized that Primeape would be too uncontrollable and too aggressive to risk using in battle. Because of this, Primeape was one of the few Pokemon owned by Ash for more than a single episode that never got to participate in a gym battle or a league match. Primeape would have been an immensely fun choice against Erica. I imagine it would have destroyed the battlefield and powered through Gloom's pungent odor to knock it into oblivion. With Ash both unwilling to use Primeape in battle and afraid of how it would react, it took a back seat for the next few episodes until its final appearance in the punchy Pokemon. At the beginning of the episode, Ash met Anthony, a fitness center owner who is training his Hitmonchan for the upcoming P1 Grand Prix tournament for fighting type Pokemon. Ash and Brock joined the tournament to help reunite Anthony with his daughter, who he had largely ignored during his training. Team Rocket also joined the tournament after stealing a Hitmonlee. Primeape's first match of the tournament was against a random trainer's Machop. As the battle began, Primeape refused all of Ash's orders, and essentially acted exactly like Ash's Charizard did during the Pokemon League. Primeape's strategy backfired majorly, as Machop karate chopped him against the ropes, caught its Mega Kick, and threw it out of the ring using a seismic toss. As Primate fell from the ring, Ash sacrificed his back to cushion Primate's fall. Ever since first watching the episode, almost 21, more than 21 years ago, Jesus, I'm old. I don't know why this wasn't considered cheating. If Primeape had been forced to take the damage, Machop probably would have won the match. But I digress. Ash's sacrifice motivated Primeape so much and moved it to such an extent that it decided to begin following his orders. From this moment onwards, Ash and Primeape were friends, allies, and most importantly, teammates. As soon as Primeape got back into the ring, it used a combination of Scratch and Mega Kick to absolutely devastate Machop. It won the battle and advanced itself to the next round. From that moment onward, Ash and Primate fought as a team, fully trusting in each other's abilities. In the next round of the tournament, Primate fought and defeated Machop's fully evolved form, Machamp. Even though the battle was short, Machamp is an incredibly intimidating Pokemon, and the fact that Primate beat it so effortlessly showed that when Primate worked together with Ash, its potential was near limitless. It's possible that with Ash at its corner, Primate might have even defeated Ash's Charmander, making Primate at this time, however brief, his most powerful Pokemon in the series. After defeating Machamp, Primate faced Team Rocket's stolen Hitmonlee in the finals. Unfortunately for Anthony, his Hitmonchan had been defeated because Team Rocket cheated. Who would have guessed? If Hitmonchan had had a fair fight with Hitmonlee, it's entirely possible that it might have appeared in the finals against Primate. The world will never know who would have won between the two. But personally, my money has been and shall always be on Ash's Primate. Hitmonlee opened the battle against Primate using a flurry of kicks. After some encouragement from Ash, Primate landed an epic uppercut against its foe and eventually defeated it using Seismic Toss. While not as epic as Charizard's around the world throw, Primate's toss was still top notch. With Hitmonlee defeated, Primate was crowned P1 champion. Just as Ash and Primate began to celebrate, Anthony arrived and said, hey, I'd like to train Primate into a true champion. The catch being that Primate would need to train at Anthony's gym rather than travel with Ash. I've always found this to be incredibly presumptuous. Who's to say Ash wouldn't have trained it better? Under Ash's control, Primate could have fought against gym leaders, random trainers, different types of Pokemon, in different regions. Anthony robbed Primate of this opportunity. Though Anthony robbed Primate of its opportunity to see the world, Ash ultimately decided that Primate would best be nurtured under his control. And at the end of the day, Primate was Ash's Pokemon. Much like with Butterfree, Ash felt that his Pokemon's well-being was more important than his team's battling potential. He released Primate to Anthony so that it could better improve its fighting ability. As an aside, let's hope Primate forgave Ash for removing it from its natural environment and its family, only to abandon it a few episodes after its capture. For most of you Pokemon fans out there, it's probably no surprise that Primate has yet to return to the anime. We've been waiting for a long, long time. It's only appeared once in the opening of a later season and in two flashbacks, most recently in the Black and White series when Ash recalled his Charizard. As much as I hate to say this, it's possible we may never see Primate fight again. Much like Butterfree and Lapras, Primate seems to be a chapter in the TV series 
that the writers have closed indefinitely. There have been many times throughout the anime when Ash stumbled onto a fighting dojo, but never once has he recalled that he owned a P1 Grand Champion. In the Johto episode, Two Hits and a Miss, for example, Ash was offered leadership over a fighting dojo, yet he failed to mention that he owned one of the most powerful fighting types in the entire Kanto region. Though Primeape never returned to the series, I've often thought, just how would Kanto have changed if Primeape had been brought along? The most glaring and obvious difference is that Ash would have had access to a major powerhouse. Primeape would have likely made short work of both Blaine and Giovanni's Pokemon, who gave Ash's underpowered team a major run for their money. Not only would Primeape have had a huge impact on Ash's quest for badges, but it also would have had an incredible impact on Ash's pursuit to win the Indigo League. Hands down, Primeape would have both decimated and swept Richie's team. I can't imagine it losing to Happy, Sparky, or Zippo. Because Primeape would have helped Ash defeat Richie, he also would have advanced to the top 16 of the Indigo League, where he would have been able to fight with six Pokemon rather than just three. When you consider that he could have had a team of Primeape, Muck, Kingler, Tauros, Charizard, and Pikachu, of course, with Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Pidgeotto as alternates, it's hard to imagine him losing the league. Ash would have been a major threat. But alas, Primeape's hint of return was never followed up upon. We can only hope that the Pokemon Journey series reverses the 21-year drought of Primeape appearances. Personally, I hope to see Primeape return for a P1 tournament where Ash uses a team of six fighting-type Pokemon. His team could consist of Primeape, Infernape, Heracross, Halucha, Riolu, and Snorlax for Sumo. Now that we've discussed what could have been, let's examine why Primeape has yet to return. First things first, Primeape is over 21 years forgotten. New fans, they just may not remember him. And older fans like myself, we're getting older. Secondly, Primeape doesn't promote anything. It lost relevance when Pokemon Gold and Silver were released, and that was a long, long time ago. Unless Primeape appears in Detective Pikachu 2, I honestly don't see it re-entering the cultural zeitgeist. Finally, and most importantly, I believe Primeape never returned because it was basically a proto-Charizard. Their stories are incredibly similar. Both were powerful Pokemon that refused to listen to Ash. Each of them only began taking orders after Ash proved his willingness to protect and love them no matter what the cost was. On the subject of Charizard, I imagine that if Primeape had stayed with Ash, Charizard would have likely obeyed him only a few episodes after its evolution. Primeape is too hot-tempered, too loyal, and too emotional for it to have stood idly by as Charizard openly disrespected Ash and treated him like garbage. But I also imagine it would have wanted revenge for its loss against Charmander. Judging by its personality, Primeape wanted to be the best, and its strength was a major measure of its self-confidence. Under Ash's command, Primeape would have likely challenged and defeated Charizard in combat. Seeing how powerful Primeape had become under Ash's command would force Charizard to realize it's more powerful with him than without. And this is just fan fiction, but I imagine Charizard and Primeape would have been shown as the best of friends after their battle, just like Squirtle and Bulbasaur. As a rage-filled physical fighter, Primeape's fighting style more resembled Mike Tyson than any Pokemon we had seen up until this point. It used four moves throughout its time on the series. The first being Scratch, which I would instantly replace with Fury Swipes if it ever returned. Next being Thrash, which, as Mankey's Pokedex entry says, is an iconic move for the species. Next, it knew Mega Kick, which, pretty awesome, right? Mega Kick, super strong kick. While Seismic Toss could be replaced by the powerful and destructive Dragon-type attack, Outrage. It also struck me as odd when re-watching the episodes that Charmander was given the attack Rage, while Primeape didn't use it at all. All in all, Primeape ended its Pokemon battle career with five wins and one loss. It won against Jesse Zekins, James's Coughing, a random trainer's Machop, a random trainer's Machamp, and Giant's Hitmonlee. 
and its one loss was against Ash's Charmander. It's worth noting that it would have easily defeated Ash's Pikachu, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle had their fights continued. Ultimately, Primate's time on the series was limited yet incredibly memorable. Since releasing Primate, Ash has left many other Pokemon in training. But unlike those Pokemon, such as Squirtle, Charizard, and Gliscor, Primate is the only one that's left to train and yet to reappear. All we can really do now is speculate what could have been, wonder what may still be, and fondly remember Primate's time with Ash. With that being said, that's all for today, folks. I'll be back next week to cover another one of Ash's Kanto Pokemon. I'd love to hear which Pokemon you want me to cover in the future. I'm open to all of them. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss my next episode. My name again is Professor Silver, and it's been an absolute pleasure to share with you today. I will respond to every comment personally, so let me know what you think. Catch you later.